okay. I guess I should clarify this before we move on. Questions are happening at the end, right? Like big questions like that come at the end. And I'm going to do it in the like little stage channel below. Uh, you can see there's a questions channel. That way I can pull you guys in. You can talk to me with your voices, which is cooler than text. And I can answer questions and then everybody can, you know, check it out. I think that's a much better way of doing it than constantly interrupting the the like flow of the lesson, right? Right now it's just going to be like, it's going to go all at once. So, <clears throat> all of these pieces are very important, right? Um, the fundamental way that I write a song is basically a three-step procedure, right? I'll pull open the channel rack and I'll make a pattern in here, right? And then I'll go over to the mixer and apply effects to those different sounds in the pattern. And then I'll open up the playlist and paint the patterns in, right? So it's a three-step process. Make pattern, adjust effects, arrange pattern. That's basically it. Now, I know there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm telling you guys how, how I'm doing it because I'm the one who's doing this. Like, I don't know. Basically what I'm getting at with that thought is there are a million ways to do this. So if you find a different way that works better for you, a different flow, please do that. Don't think that this is the only way to go about it. So let's start with I guess the channel rack, right? The first step is to create your pattern. And you're looking at this and you're like, what the fuck are all these things? What, what do you do with, what do you do with these? So a default FL Studio project is gonna come with a kick, clap, snare, and hat, which I just said out of order. And this area here is gonna give you like these little buttons to play sounds in time with, uh, you know, with the whole song. So, when you look at the kick, right, you can click on each of these little nodes here. I'm going to call them nodes. I don't actually know what they're called. And those are going to place down notes, basically. And you see how it's divided into fours. Uh, if you don't know anything about music theory, everything is usually counted in fours. Uh, that's like the standard. And then deviations from that are usually considered to be a little bit strange. You know, some songs are in three, four time, which means that they'll count in threes. Some are in five, four time. Some are in 17, 18 time. It gets really ridiculous. Um, but I'll give you guys more examples about that later. So for now, we're going to stick with four, four time because it's simple and we're counting at fours. And, you know, you can tap that out on your on your leg or whatever you do. You're like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's just easy to follow along, right? It feels good. So when we lay down on these notes, I'm going to show you how this thing looks when it's actually in progress. You see how this button here is set to pattern. Uh, it'll be orange. So for those of you using an older version of FL Studio, um, that button there should be orange. I, I think it's just orange or green in old versions. Now it says pat or song. So that's important to check out, right? If you want to see what's playing in right here, you're set right and then you hit play. Are you guys able to hear that? Great. Okay. So we're in 130 BPM, so there's 130 beats per minute. Um, and then the kick, you know, is playing once every four, uh, well, once every beat, actually. So the divisions here are basically the colors, right? You see gray, burgundy, gray, burgundy. And so each of those are like four quarter notes, right? Those are like, you know, a quarter of each beat. And so we put one down at the beginning of each. <clears throat> Right. I'm not going to go very much farther into the specifics of how, you know, timings work, because I feel like the music theory video is going to explain that really well. But, you know, at least you can understand visually where the distinctions are. Right. You don't just have to hear it. You can also see it. And that's something that FL Studio is really, really good at. And you should start to learn all of the different things in here, whether it's automation clips so that, you know, effects get applied automatically or whether it's timings or what have you. They all have visual indicators, and I can't really explain to you what every single one of those are, but when you're learning a new technique in FL Studio, just be sure to keep your eyes open just as much as your ears. That's going to be very helpful for you down the line because, you know, you're going to be able to see what's happening more often than you're going to be able to hear it if you're starting to learn. I'm going to need a lot of water during this presentation. Oh, okay. So... You guys know how to apply drums now, right? We're going to like add some hats in there. And then we're going to add some snares in there. It's not complicated. I feel like you guys can get that just by looking at it. And we're going to add like more hats because it's fun. 
right? It sounds like ass, but that's because we're using default everything. So, you know, we're going to do some more interesting stuff later. Uh, one thing you want to look at over here on the left side is this, like, this big menu thing. I didn't use it very much, and I'm not very experienced with it because all of the tutorials I watched as a kid did not talk about this thing at all. But if you open up packs, FL Studio will often come with large chunks of extra free drums. And they're basically just WAV files that already exist here. See, there's a lot of different kicks. There's a lot of different snares. There's a lot of different everythings. So one thing that I would recommend doing is when you're like learning how to make these drum beats, uh, also go check out these little bits here, right? Uh, you could use whatever sound effects you want. You could go pull wave files from any website. Um, just make sure you're not accidentally down downloading any more RAM because that's not the websites we're looking for. Um, yeah, I, I would highly recommend going in here, stealing a couple of these and putting them in, which all you have to do is grab, drag it, and then drop it in any of this empty gray area here. And boom. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's already in there. So these are like all of these wave files. And this is something that you're going to need to know about FL Studio, like conceptually. All of these wave files here are like they're located somewhere in your computer, right? When you pull open the file explorer, these are located in the files of FL Studio. So if you want to add anything else to these projects that you want to be able to access through this menu, you basically just go find the, where these like where these live in your computer, and then you drop all of your samples in there, right? So if you have a collection of loops and you want to be able to access them through here instead of flying through your file explorer and figuring out where they are, uh, I would highly recommend dr like dropping them into a folder and then basically attaching them to this menu. That way you have them at any given time. I haven't done that yet because I've never used this like this resource browser and I'm really lazy. So I'm not going to actually do any of the organization until I get a new computer, which is going to be later on. So for now, I just have to be the piece of shit that opens up or uh, sorry, file explorer and double clicks each file to hear what the loop sounds like before I bring it in. So now that we have like drums and stuff down, right, you guys can get in tune. Um, the tools that you want to know for that are, are up here. So you see the metronome here, very important. I'm assuming most of you know what a metronome is. It's not super complicated. A metronome is basically something that keeps time. It'll, uh, it'll hit like an extra, like higher pitched note every, every time that you pass by the sorry, I'm figuring out exactly how to explain this. Like you notice how every fourth hit it's higher pitched, right? That allows you to keep in time and understand that we're currently working in four, four time, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So it's going to hit at the very beginning with a higher pitch. Um, if we do something like this and we go and can you guys see this drop down menu, by the way, I don't know if it shows. Someone help me out. I got to know. No. Okay. So. I guess I'll just have to verbally tell you guys because you can't see it. Um, if you go into options and then you go to, where is it? Project info? Nope, sorry, not project info. Aha, yeah, project. All right, there's this little tab here. Can you guys see this menu where it shows numerator, denominator, time base, everything? Man, oh, this sucks. Okay. Well, anyway, you basically want to pull up your options and then you change the numerator from four to three, right? The, the, it's all in plain English, so you'll be able to see. Um, and so when you do that, you notice now that we're looking at threes. So when you hit the metronome, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we're talking in threes. Now I'll turn the camera on once, you know, a couple more people leave just to make sure that I'm not stopping anyone from coming in. Um, you know, when you adjust the numerator, you change how many beats it counts before it resets, right? So if you want to make a song like, um, what's a, what's a song that's in three, four, uh, Ridley's theme. I don't know if you guys play Smash Brothers, but Ridley's theme is a really famous song that's in three, four time, I think. Um, yeah, if you guys want to work in three, four, you go and adjust it there. If you want to work in four, four, which I would recommend for now, because it's just like straight up easier do that also you can grab the side of all of these windows and like drag them around and it readjusts the size very important um yeah 
So now you guys know the tools. Well, I explained one of the tools. The metronome is one tool that helps you make drum beats that are in time, right? You want them to resolve themselves after uh, you make them. I'll explain re resolving a pattern in a little while. The next thing you want to know is the tempo, right? And I this is a pretty easy concept. The higher the number, the faster the beat is, right? So currently we're at 130 beats per minute. If we crank it up to 200, you see how much faster it's running through this pattern, right? It's really not complicated. Big number means faster. Generally speaking, anything past 200 BPM becomes hard to work with if you're like doing a standard, uh, like a standard genre. If you're doing like drum and bass, over 200 is a joke. Like it's easy. Um, can we go to 999 BPM? Nope, we cap out at 522. Yep, that's as high as we go. Okay, so you understand how that works now. We'll go over the mat song later, I promise. Um, so now you get the tempo and you have the metronome and those should help you create a drum beat. So if you guys want for the next five minutes, I'd appreciate if you, you know, fly through and check out how, you know, how drum beats work. Give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to figure out exactly how I want to move to this next section, which is instruments. So we'll add a massive there. I'm basically just using that as an excuse so that I can actually, you know, do this on my own. Like I, I can set up the next thing that we wanted to talk about before we get to it. Mm, the last one we're going to use is Citrus because that is the one that comes with your FL Studio. Okay, so now let's talk about instruments because you guys want to make music. You don't just want to make drum loops. That's, you know, there's music to do. Um, so what you basically want to do when you want to add an instrument is you right click any of these things here and it opens up a sub menu and you're looking for something that says insert and it brings up another sub menu and it gives you every single one of the plugins that you currently own, right? There's tons of stuff in here and it's a little bit confusing. But some really easy starting points are Citrus and possibly Harmer if uh, the if the trial comes with it, right? The full version doesn't come with it. I think the trial version does come with it, but then you know you have the limitation of not being able to save. Um, so oh well, uh, we're just going to talk about like two of my favorite plugins right now, as well as Citrus because I know that everybody has Citrus, right? It came with your fucking Xbox. You have Citrus, so. When you right click on any of these instruments and click piano roll, this is our main workspace here. By the way, Citrus starts with a C, or sorry, not with a C, I'm an idiot. It starts with an S, it's S-Y-T-R-U-S. You have Citrus, it came on your Xbox. Well, I got an Xbox on day one. Shut up. Okay, so, so it comes with a default sound, right? And the way that this basically works is the left side, right, up and down, you're looking at a piano, like, and I'm sure most of you know how a piano works. The further along the right-hand side you play, the higher the note goes. Easy. You get it. I know that you do. <clears throat> and then you know where the octaves are because it separates them by Cs, right? So C3 is lower than C4, which is lower than C5. You get it, right? This basically allows you to figure out where everything is a lot easier. You have reference points now when you make things. So if you click anywhere on this thing, you make a note. Then you click on the note again, and you drag it around. You can move it places. Pretty cool, right? So let's start with like D, and then we'll do F sharp. See, another thing that's really nice is if you're not super familiar with music theory, all of the notes have the names of the notes on them. D4, F sharp 4, A4, like you can actually see them. So you're not, you're not guessing. You don't have to constantly think about it. Easy. 
right? When you hit play and it plays the pattern, you know, it, it's going to run through everything that you built here. So if I add drums on this thing, right, it's going to play all of the different things that I've placed there. So let's open up the piano roll again. By the way, if you have an instrument and you have notes on it and you want to go back to the piano roll, just click on the little thing here. Um, it'll open up the piano roll really easily. I don't know what this is going to sound like. It might be good, it might be bad. Okay, that's kind of neat. Um, so all of these notes can be adjusted in length by changing how, well, that, that's redundant. Changing how long they are by dragging the edge of them, right? So you can make really sharp staccato notes or you can make really long glissando notes, which are fancy words for short and sweet and then long and dreary. Um, and then you can also hit control A like every other program on your computer and select everything. And then you can adjust them that way too. So you can, you know, batch edit notes basically. So what happens if we change them to be very short? It's wild. We're making progress. That's cool. So if we want to extend them really long, it's probably going to sound like shit. See, there's too much going on. So generally speaking, don't do that. But it all depends on the instrument that you're using and make the song that you're making. So don't let me tell you what to do when it comes to that. All right, let's cut these to half notes. So another thing that you probably want to know is that every instrument reacts to two notes at once differently, right? So uh, what they usually call this is polyphony, right? So polyphony. Um, it's usually a setting that you'll see in your plugin uh, somewhere. I'm not sure where it sits in Citrus, but some things allow you to play multiple notes at once. Some of them don't, and some of them slide between notes when you place multiple ones. So let's see what this one does. Okay, so this one allows you to play two notes at once. So if I copy this whole thing, paste it in, and then move it upwards, right? Now you can hear that there's two notes being played at once and they're the same notes, but they're an octave apart. An octave is the, the set between C4 and C5. So, you know, when, whenever you're working with this, be sure to check because sometimes it's really cool to make chords where you play multiple no uh, notes at once and you know you get a neat sound but then sometimes you don't want that and you want it to slide between the notes instead and i don't know it's up to you what you want but make sure that you know that all of these things are going to react to them differently also imasti i've never heard freedom dive so this is purely coincidental for legal reasons so um let's see what am i going to do with this now you know what we're going to do? We're going to change the preset. So bringing Citrus right to the main part of the screen, you can click on this little arrow up here, and it brings down a drop-down menu. But then what you want to do is, because uh, you can't see the drop-down menu, um, you'll see Piano Roll at the very top. And then you want to go to Presets, which is right below. And it brings up this massive screen of presets. It's got basses. It's got guitars. It's got arps, brass, sequences, percussion. Like, it's got tons of stuff. I'm specifically talking about Citrus, by the way. So when you're doing that, there's a million different presets for you to pick from. So you don't have to go and create your own, you know, pre or you don't have to create your own instruments or sounds quite yet. It's a very special talent and very important thing to have. However, if you're like me and you're lazy, you can find a ton of preset sounds. So like, let's change this to, I think, a sound that I really overused when I was a kid. Uh, basic Distorted 2. <laughs> All right, so now the whole thing sounds different. I, I used that specific preset like fucking crazy. I used it all the time. Like, it's wild. Um, so, yeah. Anything that you're doing in there can be changed just by adjusting the preset. And then, as you can see here, there's a ton of different knobs and buttons and blah, 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 blah that you can modify. So if I play this and I grab the modulation here... It just sounds ridiculous. Sorry, I'm gonna go over how to get to the uh, the plugins again. So at the very top left hand side of the window, you see this like little arrow here beside the cog for the detailed settings. Detailed settings are important, but we'll do that later. 
this little arrow here is going to open up a drop down menu and then you want to look for the big drop down menu that comes out of that that's listed as plugins right it should be very close to the top so presets pretty cool but you don't have to stick to them there's a ton of different options on how to adjust them i'm going to be honest with you i'm not very acquainted with citrus because when i did use So a lot of different plugins will come with like these browsers that you can see here. Can everybody see the massive window? Perfect. So not all plugins are going to allow you to search uh, presets through that little menu that I told you about. Every company does it differently, right? Plugins are made by different companies. They're all like, you know, different styles and for different instruments or whatever. However, like this one here, Massive, is particularly my favorite because of the sounds that it makes, right? Um, I'm pretty sure you can get a free trial somewhere, but I haven't bothered because I just, I bought it. Uh, um, so looking at it, right, it has its own built-in browser. You can fly through all of these different things. I'm going to reiterate this again. You don't have Massive. If you have the trial right now, you don't have Massive. I'm just using this as an example because I'm comfortable with it. However, a lot of these concepts carry over between plugins, and that's very important. So a lot of them are going to have browsers uh, that you can fly through and choose exactly what you want. So, you know, I can filter things by like, I want a synth lead, and I feel like this adjusted aggressor two that I made, right? That's what I want to use right now. So then I open up the piano roll. <laughs> Pretty cool. I like it, right? So when you have presets, like this is the original aggressor, you can make adjustments to it. And uh, like I can mess with all these knobs on the macro control. I can go change these attributes here. I can toggle things on and off by clicking these buttons. And then of course you can adjust it to the point where it sounds like this. And then you can save what you've done to the preset. So when you, you, know, when you mess with a preset and you like the way that it sounds, don't forget to save it because you can always use it again another day, right? It basically adds itself as a new adjustment of a preset to your thing. So then from there on out, if you make any modifications, you can always go back to it. So now we basically understand how to implement sounds, right? We know how to do drums. We know how to do notes for music. Um, another one that I highly recommend taking a look at, just if you want to get really, really serious about this, is Contact because it has some of the most realistic instruments I've ever heard. And it is supposedly the gold standard for video game production, right? People like Grant Kirkhope of Banjo-Kazooie fame and David Wise of Donkey Kong Country fame use resources from contact here in their music. So although it's expensive, if you really want to get serious, uh, this is definitely something to keep on your wish list and wait for the Christmas sale that's half off. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Let's open up a pre-made project now uh, so that I can demonstrate the mixer because I don't really want to make a new song from scratch. I am lazy. And we'll use, yeah, let's use this song. Um, this is a song that I wrote for a Friday Night Funkin' mod that I wanted to make. Um, I haven't been able to make it yet because I don't have a team, but I'm also working on like eight other projects. So we'll deal with it later. It's, you know, something for later. And you see now there's a bunch of different windows open. There's a loop window here that shows you like, yeah, we doing, ain't no yeah job. that's a shitty loop. We're not using that. Um, then there's sound goodizer that like really amplifies boyfriend's voice. There's delay, which gives it some echo to it. There's reverb, which gives it also echo, but in a different way. Um, I'll explain the difference between reverb and delay once we actually get into the granular parts. But suffice it to say, all of these pieces here amount to the song I'm going to play you right now. I'll just start it right about here. Ah. 
I'm assuming you guys can hear this, because otherwise this is really awkward. Yeah, I can tell you that this definitely wasn't inspired by Etelid, considering I wrote this song back in March. Um, so, like, way, way back. This, this was a while ago. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is a song for Friday Night Funkin' Mod, as you can guess, because Boyfriend's voice is in it. So, looking here on the playlist, we're actually going to get to that later, and we're going to go over how all of this stuff is arranged soon. But first, I want to talk about the mixer, which is something I didn't learn until way way later so you see each of these different things is actually something that you can find here on the channel rack right you can see this loop directly lines up with the color of this one here you can see this one says boy which is a compressed like version of boyfriend scale if i extend it out then you can see the text there right so boyfriend scale is bound to that channel on the mixer this loop is bound to this channel like all the colors really help out in figuring out what it is um and basically what you do is you grab one of these particular things off of the channel rack, right? You click on this little green button to highlight it, and then you attach it to one of these mixer stations, and then you can add effects on the right-hand side to modulate how it sounds, right? Not every sound is going to be exactly how you want it when you put it in there. So let's go to the boyfriend. No, let's go to... What else can I check out here? Aha. Okay. So we'll we'll talk about the genie voice for a minute cuz that's the character that we're playing against. Right? So you 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 can hear how he sounds. Um right now I'm looking at the side here and one of the plugins I have bound to him is hardcore, which is uh like something that adds a bunch of chorus, it adds modulators, it it basically distorts stuff. So if we turn it off by clicking this little green button, you can hear the difference almost immediately. Right, he sounds a lot more tame and there's not as much like crunch to his voice. So effects make a big difference. You, you can do all sorts of stuff with them. So again, we'll go over it here. Like if we want to attach something, we're going to use something shitty that, you know, I'm not actually going to use it again because I'm not going to save this. So if I want to attach this snare to the mixer, I got to click on this little green button here to make sure that it's selecting that one specific thing. And then I right click over here and it brings up a drop down menu. Right, it says insert eight, so like I know that that one's empty. And then there's a button in there that says channel routing, and it opens up a sub menu. I know you guys can't see the drop down, so I'm just going to verbalize all of it. Um, channel routing, and then you want to click route selected channels to this track. Right, you've selected those channels up on the channel rack, and now you're routing them to this specific mixer track. Now you can see snare is attached to it, so whenever I do something with snare, all of these effects on the right hand side, slot one to ten, are going to play. Right. So when you open this thing up, it opens another drop down menu that you guys can't see, but there's a ton of different things like there's delay and there's reverb and there's EQ and all sorts of stuff. I'm going to focus on the three that I think are the most important, which are reverb, delay and EQ, like I just said. Um, so if we go into the boyfriend scale, right, sound goodizer basically just uh, rounds out the sound and like makes it more potent. So I have it on sounds that are very you know, weak. The boyfriend voice is kind of weak. I don't just want to crank up the volume. I want to make it feel bigger. So I added sound goodizer. Let's see if I can properly express the difference here. You can almost hear the difference. It's very subtle, but like sometimes all you need is subtle, right? So let's see. Fruity delay. Let's turn on the delay and see how that sounds. You can kind of hear how that sounds like dreamy, right? Like there's that echo to it. So like I was talking about before, there's a difference between reverb and delay. And delay is specifically when you shout into a canyon and you hear it repeat back at you. When you go echo, 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 and you can hear it come back to you every so often. That's what delay is. So listen. Listen. 
right? You can hear that, right? It's bouncing back at you. Reverb, on the other hand, is an echo that makes it just sound like you're in a big room. So you know how sometimes sounds reverberate and sound bigger than they really are because they're in a big room. Right, those are two different, very different like types of sounds and you gotta know what the difference is between them in order to use the right thing when you want the right sound, you know? So reverb and delay are both very helpful. They make everything feel like they're in a lot larger of a space. However, you really, really have to pay attention to the difference between the two. So just to make sure that you get the thing that you want out of it, right? So I think I tried both of those on Boyfriend and I decided I didn't want either of them. Um, so let's attach parametric EQ because that's the last thing that I wanted to show you in the mixer. Uh, excuse me. Um, so you get this big thing here, right? And when you play it, oh, come on. Right, so those red lines are basically the frequencies at which the sound is playing. So you see that there's a lot of high-end stuff on here. There's a lot of high frequencies in Boyfriend's voice. So depending on where we want to put it into the mix, if we want it to be on the top end, so he can, you know, you can hear all the, uh, hear all the vocals, then you want to basically cut out a lot of the low end, which you can do just by dragging these little knobs here, right? Um, if you want it to be mostly low end, like, you know, a sub bass or something, so it's in the background, but you can't quite hear it, you do the opposite, right? You grab the front ones and you pull them down. And because you can see where those like red lines are, you can figure out, you know, what parts of the sound do I have and which ones do I want to cut out and figure out, you know? So let's play it here. Right, and now I cut out most of the high end, so it kind of sounds like he's muted, right? So if I go presets, default, we go back to normal, we're going to go back to where I was there. Now let's cut out the low end and see what it sounds like. Now he sounds like he's on a shitty radio, right? And then if we cut out the midpoint, which I'll do in a second here, it just feels weird. Having a lot of high end and a lot of low end, but no mid feels very strange, but it serves a purpose sometimes. I don't know where it serves a purpose yet. I haven't figured it out, but it does. So there's also some presets that you can use. Like one of my personal favorites is old telephone. That's fun, I like it. Um, yeah, it's very important to be able to EQ your stuff because if you get a sample of a bass that's just way, way too loud on the high end and then you can't hear your main instruments over it or you feel like it's interrupting, you can just pull open EQ and you can cut shit out of it, right? You don't need to deal with that. Likewise, if you have like vocals that have way too much bass in them and you want them to be lighter and airier, you can just cut out the low end of it and then you're good, right? So... Learning EQ is probably one of the most important things that I've ever learned in FL Studio, and I would highly, highly encourage you to go and test it out, figure out what's going on with it. It's very, very important. Uh, one of the biggest problems with my old music, and I can tell you this objectively, it's not like a preferential thing, it sounded not very good because I had no idea how to EQ any of my stuff, and that meant that like some bass lines were way too loud on the high end and they would just cut into things at the top end and that would result in you know the lead or some of the drums being shitty or i would use a like pre-made drum loop in my song and the hi-hats were really piercingly loud at the high end and i didn't know how to adjust that so i just reduced the volume and that made the whole mix suffer because now you can't hear the drums very well right you got to make compromises with that if you don't know how to use this tool so i would highly recommend learning eq and sort of getting a feel for it um, just so, you know, as you're composing songs together, you make sure that they're easy on the ears of the listener. Cause nobody wants to listen to a song where the bass is higher pitched than the lead. Cause that's not how that works. So we're going to delete this thing cause I don't actually need it. Right, so that's basically how the mixer works, right? I've taught you guys about a couple of these effects here. I've taught you guys about how to bind it to these channels here. And when you do that, you know, it's going to affect all of them on the whole song. So now let's move to the playlist where you can understand how the song is actually made. So this is what your playlist looks like, right? All of these patterns that we've been creating over time are all here, along with these colored ones, which are loops, right? So when you double click any of these, 
it pulls open their piano roll and their channel rack so you can go and modify them if you're listening to them here individually. Right? If you want to hear this thing, you toggle this pattern thing to song and then it'll start to play the entire thing. Right? Now, one of the really important things about the playlist right off the bat is these green dots here. And as I'm sure you can guess at this point, just like the rest of the program, these toggle things on and off. So if you just want to hear one thing, you toggle everything else off. You can right click it to solo it out or you can click it individually to turn it on and off, right? So let's solo the bass line here. Not crazy, like you get it. Now if we double click it, you open it here and you notice in the channel rack here, there's actually two layers to it, right? So if I wanna hear an individual layer now, I can toggle one of these off. Right, it's kind of missing a little bit of that lower end that I had before. So let's turn it on. And now it's missing that higher end, right? So I want to combine those two different sounds to make an interesting bass line. So let's toggle that on. And now, right, it gives it a much more filling sound, you know? So don't be afraid to like copy and paste an extra layer of that like sound into a different instrument in order to round it out. Sometimes one of the sounds isn't enough and you need to, you know, fill it out that way. So let's toggle everything on here again. And just like everything else in this program, you can grab it by the edges, shake it around like it owes you money, and it'll change the size of it, right? So that's really cool. And you can make things like this little chop here of this loop, right? And on its own, it leads into the drum loop really, really well. So without it, if I move it over here, The transition doesn't work nearly as well. So, you know, you just put it there. It's cool. And then you can layer drum loops like here and here to fill out the sounds that, you know, you might not have when you only have one. Right? The song would sound a lot more empty. Let's take this out. Okay, it's not as cool. Also, I forgot to re-enable the genie voice. Hold on. Right, we really feel like we're missing something now. Um, so mixing things, like whether it's adding extra layers onto the bass line or whether it's adding extra layers of drums, always helps. Or not always, but a lot of the time helps. It's pretty cool. So now uh, we're going to talk about like you know applying these things into here. So you see up here, we have this pattern selector, right? I can drag up and down and select the specific patterns. And if you look on the left here, I only really have 10 of them that I've actually made stuff in. Right? So if I click on pattern 10 and check it out, that's like the big, big solo, which is right here. You can see it right there. And it's massive, right? It's well, not massive like the plugin, massive like the size. So, right, I wanted to place that in there. So basically, all I do is have it selected on this left side, choose the paintbrush icon, and then I can just paint it in wherever I feel like. I can also right click it to get rid of it. Very, very, very easy. We're going to go over chromatic scale soon, so don't focus too hard on that because don't worry, we're going to get to it. So basically what you do is you create the pattern, you add the effects, and then once you like the way that it sounds, you can apply it here, right? So this baseline, I can just paint in as many as I want, and that's why you see I have four of the pattern three here because I just, you know, put them all together, basically. And that's our baseline. Right, so when you make the patterns, you can really rely on them for a little while. You don't have to make an individual thing for every portion of the song. You can make these little loops yourself and then put them together. That's basically the structure of what I do, except for this big solo here, right? Because I wanted to make this very like interesting and focused on its own so it doesn't repeat itself. And then there's even a few portions where the boyfriend and the genie will sing at the same time, right? So it's almost like a duet portion, which you can hear yeah, let's go in here so we can look at the genie's notes. Yeah, let's just solo it out. And then you can see the shadow notes, which are the boyfriend's notes. And 
and then now they have different things right here. So, you can actually lay down things that, you know, don't necessarily... How, how exactly am I trying to explain this, right? When you're making a pattern, you don't have to make it like, you know, super short and concise. If you really want to make a gigantic solo, you could do that. Um, sometimes it becomes harder to organize, but it's really whatever you're comfortable with. As you can see, I don't color code anything. These loops auto color code themselves. Highly recommend learning that because I lose things very frequently. Um, but nothing's named, nothing's colored. So, you know, organization is really up to you. I would recommend figuring out a system that works for you way at the beginning. So that's pretty much all there is to the playlist arrangement. It's not super complicated. Um, you right click to remove things, you left click to paint things, and then you can adjust it by, again, shaking it like it has Uno on its Xbox, but won't acknowledge it. So let's talk about the chromatic scales, because I assume that's what you guys are probably here for. We're going to rely on that Uno joke a lot. Um, so the way that I do these chromatic scales is using a program called SliceX, which I'm pretty sure comes with FL Studio. So the chromatic scales come in like a wave file, right? Just an audio file. And as you can see here, it comes with every single sound that the boyfriend could possibly make. I'm not going to do all of that because I feel like you can get it. Um, so Kawhi Sprite, I'm sure you guys know who that is at this point, has given us all of the chromatic scales for, all, I think, almost every character so far. So what's really, really nice about it is you can drop it right into SliceX and it's already pre-chopped. You don't have to put these little nodes here on your own. They're already divided just because he did that for us. And he's very nice and I like him and I like what he does. And open source projects are really great because now we can learn from them. Please make your shit open source, please. So he's already added all of these different spots here. So basically all you do to put it in there is you go and grab the wave file out of his Google Drive or whatever, and then you can just drag it out of your file browser into this specific spot here, this big area that is empty. If you look at Captain Curb's photo on uh, like in lecture hall there, you can see that the spot is empty. You just drag the wave file in there. Right? Some WAV files are going to have pre-made slices if somebody actually took the time to do that before they uploaded the WAV file, and some of them won't, so you'll have to use this tool here to add the regions. Right? You click on it, and you add a marker, and now you can drag it around and choose where it's sliced. And basically what that does is that each one of these chunks is now bound to a key on the keyboard. Makes sense, right? It's pretty cool. So when you do something like that with a chromatic scale, you can then use it just like any other instrument Whoops, that's not what I wanted. There. So now I can use it like any other instrument and just make a, a thing with, uh, you know, piano roll. And they're even labeled, which is very, very nice. So, yeah, all of those... Uh, sorry, I'm losing my voice here. No, you don't really need them to loop because you're not using them for loop. You're, you're using them for chunks, right? The, the, each of these notes is a chunk of that big wave file. So it's basically like, you know, a source for all of these sounds. And as Imasti, or I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, posted just above there, all of those are the chromatic scales that we have. So very, very helpful. You can just grab those and put them in. Is this all one message? It is. I'm going to pin that. Pin message. Cool. I'm going to grab water. Thank you very much for doing that. I was going to link the Google Drive, but this is also very helpful. So when you when you put it in there, right, if you have to make the divisions, you have to make the divisions. Um, when it comes to making enemy voices, you have a couple options, right? You can either record your own WAV file and then put it into SliceX and chop it up, which I'll show you one that I did um, somewhere else. I'll link the Google Drive uh, a little bit later. Um, unless somebody else wants to go grab it because I'm lazy. Um, or, you know, you can use regular instruments. Like, I think the one for uh, the Genie voice is, yeah, Clavinet Auto Wah Lead. And then I called it Genie because I made some modifications. Um, you can use different instruments. You can use like 
just straight wave files like uh you know unpitched or you can do pitch correcting which is kind of cool i think i have a video of that that i'm going to give you guys because i'm brand new to pitch correcting the samples to make the uh to make the like source files so i'm just going to give you guys the video for that because it's way easier i feel like the guy does a really good explanation of it um so really get super creative with the voice i'll deal with recommendations uh soon we cube do what you want with the voice. You want to record your own voice, modulate it, and then, you know, chop it up into uh, all the pieces for the WAV file? Cool, do it. Yeah, new tone is actually the thing that uh, the that the video was going to show you. Anyway, uh, you want to use an instrument? Cool. You want to record your own voice? Cool. You want to sample sands from Undertale and you want to chop that up? I don't recommend it, but sure, if you really want to be that guy, you can go and do that. Um, I'm going to open up... Nikki, because it's a modified version of this song, and I don't know if you guys know Nikki from Swap Node, like on the 3DS. We're working on a mod of that right now, and I actually made a custom uh, voice just for her, right? So a friend of mine, Volter, uh, was able to do like a full chromatic scale for me, and uh, let's see, where is it? It's somewhere here. Nikki chromatic, right? This is our own custom one. And it already comes with the pitch correcting, so which is really cool. Right, so basically, I just got them to sit down and I went, okay, O, E, way, so, you know, a bunch of different, like, mouth sounds. And then I used new tone to change the pitch, which is, again, something that I will link a video to because I only did it, like, two days ago and I don't have the confidence to tell you guys that I know everything about it. So you're going to learn from that video and not from me. Uh, and then you throw it here in Slice X. And then you can generally hit auto slicing, right? This button here. If you click or right click it, sorry, you can see dull auto slicing as opposed to medium or sharp. And it will automatically make cuts based on where the peaks and valleys of this audio file are. And so it could just kind of tell like, oh, there's a sound that begins right here. And I'm going to, you know, chop that. So now that's my first note, which is pretty cool. Um, I find that medium and sharp auto slicing are really good if you have a drum beat that you put in here and you want to like customize it. That's very helpful. But in terms of, uh, you know, voices, generally dull auto slicing is your best option, right? It gives you most of these things. It's pretty cool. I like it. So now we can actually see it in practice right here if I solo it out. Right, that's a real person voice. How cool is that? It, it took a, a little bit of effort. It was like, I think, maybe 45 minutes while watching the tutorial uh, to figure it out. But I feel like once you do it a couple times, it'll come really naturally. So if you're working on multiple mods with different voices and you want to make them all customized, it'll eventually become something really easy to do. Um, yeah, and again, it's a wave file uh, that basically just has every possible sound that the character can make. And then the program, SliceX, sorry, let me... There we go. The program SliceX uh, is going to chop it up into little chunks so that it plays pieces of the WAV file whenever you want. So again, I'll just show this once more to make sure that you guys understand how it works. Right? When you put the WAV file in here, it's probably not going to have any divisions because you made it yourself, which is fine. And then what you want to do is you can either click this button here to add a marker and then drag it around to where you can actually section something off and then it'll play that as a separate chunk. We're not gonna use this marker right now. Um, or you can click auto slicing and I would highly recommend using dull auto slicing, uh, which you know, you right click the button and then click dull auto slicing instead. And then sometimes if your wave file is clean enough and the separations are distinct enough, then it'll just automatically do this all for you, all of these markers. You can also name these markers so that you know which notes they are, but I got lazy and didn't do it. So I just have to figure it out by ear. But again, I'm not the most organized person, and I would recommend that you should be the most organized person. Right? So that's basically how you use the chromatic scales. If you have one from someone else, like somebody gave me a, a matte chromatic scale, which was kind of neat, you can just throw it in there. And sometimes it'll come with the chop, sometimes it won't. If you want to make your own, it's kind of a it's a big experimental project, right? You gotta you gotta learn it. So if I unsolo that and we play the song, now you can hear what it sounds like with Nikki against the boyfriend. Oh, 
right. No, I chopped that part out. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, that's the benefit of making your own chromatic scales. So you can get exactly the sound that you want. However, you know, the word chromatic implies that there's tone to it, which you don't actually need. And I will show you through another song that we're working on, uh, the Me Brawler, right? Uh, this mod again, isn't out yet, but we're getting really close. Um, Me Brawler has a very unique voice. Um, particularly because I ripped it right out of Smash Brothers and it just uses the source files from there. I, you know, I turned it into a quote unquote chromatic scale, even though it doesn't have any tone to it. So let's open it up here. Let's turn those on. Me brawler voice. I know it's spelled wrong. Don't tell me that. It's just Japanese guys screaming, which is kind of funny. But when you put it into practice, it gives you way more of like a mat vibe, right? Where you don't need to have tones to the voice. It is the song from the trailer. Good catch. I'm going to show you guys what this looks like in terms of notes. There we go. I'm just going to go through now because I'm starting to run out of content, so I'll just let you guys hear it. So, as, as we just learned, and as you guys already knew from Matt, sometimes the creative choice that you make doesn't require toning, which is kind of cool. Um, so, you know, experiment with that. Sometimes it's fun to just have percussive voice sounds. Um, and also when I said rip things directly from Smash, I mean, I went to a YouTube video that had the collection of sounds and pulled it from there. I didn't pull it right out of the game because I'm not, I'm not like that. I can't do that. So another thing that you'll notice, and the thing I'm going to advise against every single time is the fact that all of the me brawler voices and all of the boyfriend voices are all in this one channel. Like it's all one pattern. This is a horrible idea. Don't do this because you will like lose track of it all the time. Don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. All right. Also, some like a little trick that isn't really necessary to know, but something that I thought really worked for this song is because the me brawler voice has no tone in it. Whoops, I went too far. Where is it? Right, he's just shouting. What I did was I also grabbed another instrument that was really quiet and added the tones that the boyfriend was gonna sing, right? Because the boyfriend still sings in key and like, you know, makes different pitches so when you do this like sometimes it's beneficial to add like an extra little instrument behind it so now you can hear the difference here and then the boyfriend replicates that thing too So if, if you got a sharp ear, you'll notice that that's actually the same like melody from the trailer. And what I did was I cut out the boyfriend's voice so that it wasn't like spoiled, but now it's spoiled. So whatever. Um, yeah, that's basically how that song worked. And now you guys know how that works. I'm struggling to think what else can I demonstrate? I think that's about it in terms of Friday Night Funkin' songs. Like the rest of the stuff that I would want to talk about for it is more conceptual, right? How to structure the songs. So let me pull open one more and we'll talk about it there. Let's not save changes to that. Uh, 
Oh, actually, no, I'll show you guys something fun first because um, Rosebud put out a tricky chromatic scale and it sounds atrocious in my song, but I thought it was really funny. So I'm going to show you guys anyway. So what I did was I actually took one of the songs that I'm working on for a mod right now uh, versus Ali and Ira. And I, instead of using her voice, I just straight replaced it for Tricky's voice. Please, for the love of God, when you do a replacement like that, go in and do some fine tuning because none of these are going to work in the same way. Um, like you're going to notice that this feels really out of place. Um, I didn't edit any of the, uh, any of the velocity. So the volumes and the uh, intensities aren't any different than what it would have been in the regular song. So it feels a little bit strange coming out of, you know, tricky. Let's see. And you can see now I finally labeled this thing right here, blue voices. I'm learning to organize, thank God. So before I go any further, actually, something that I really want to emphasize is that you can make a lot of really, really cool sounds on your own, right? Pulling loops is cool, like, you know, using presets is cool. But even like, uh, this is embarrassing to show, actually, because it means that you guys are going to hear my raw voice. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four. We're going to turn off both of the plugins here that I use to modify it. And you're going to hear this, like, drop right here where I added this into the song. Check it out. One, two, three, four. I sound really strained and I hate it. But when you add the effects, this, this just demonstrates the power of the effects that we were talking about earlier, why it's really necessary for you to do it. That right, sounds a lot more interesting. And all of that was just complete raw voice with a couple effects on it, right? So one thing I would also really recommend that you do is, you know, record stuff, modify it with the effects, like chop it up, do some fun different shit with it because... You know, I, I was really embarrassed and worried about using my own sounds in music way back when I was a kid. And now I'm way more confident about it. Like, I still don't like it. I don't like the way that I sound. But I can do some really, really interesting things with that stuff. So, you know, give it a try. And you'll see how it sounds right here. So we're going to talk about that for a second. The funny part was that the note where uh, Tricky actually holds it, because that's how the original song went, 14, uh, the chromatic scale that I was given, um, he, uh, it, it's really gross, right? It's barely in tone. I just, I think it's so funny that that happened to be the one note that was held in the song. It just, it sounds ridiculous. So when we go through here, There's a little surprise at the top. The Hank scream. The drop from expurgation was included in this. Hank! It's pretty cool. I'm really glad that that was put in there because when you have that there, you can actually implement it in funny little ways. So I did do a little bit of an edit here where normally it would have been a couple different notes, but at the very drop of the song, I replaced it with Hank. And it sounds pretty great, I think. Yeah, it is a little bit quiet, actually, because I didn't go and edit this very much. Can I boost it? Can I boost it? Oh, that's not the right pattern. I want this one. Where is Hank? What the fuck? Oh, no, it's in this one. I'm an idiot. Uh, where's the Hank scream? Give me the Hank scream. Can I boost it? Oh, perfect. That's way better. That's uh, still a little loud, actually. Let's bring it down. And 
here's a little secret. Um, it's not really a secret. I'm sure you guys have heard the words key change before. Um, I find that if you want to increase the intensity of a song and you want to like keep it going just a little bit longer, you can actually go back and reuse chunks of your song that you've already used, but do a key change. So it's a little bit higher, a little bit lower. And all you got to do for that is you grab all the notes that you already wrote, select them all, and then bring them up or down together a certain amount. And you can really, you know, extend shit that way and make it sound more fun. So if you listen right here, right at this point, we're about to hit a key change so that I can keep the finale of this song going a little bit longer, as well as adding an extra bass line to increase the intensity and modifying the voices just slightly. Pretty fucking cool. I don't know. At the very end of the song, regardless of um, like which voice I'm using, I'm going to be real with you. I get shivers at the end because I don't know. I'm just really happy with how that came out. Um, also, I just want to preface it. A lot of the sounds in this thing I've been using out of um, paid plugins. So please don't expect to be able to get electric guitars that sound like this um, right off the bat. I check like that's expensive. I don't want to set your expectations up so that you get, you know, oh my God, I'm going to have like, you know, super professional quality music just right off the bat. You're going to have to do a lot of hunting for free resources. You're going to have to do a lot of like budget hunting for um, like discounts and stuff, right? Almost everything I bought in terms of plugins and sounds, I, uh, I definitely waited for a half off or more sale. So I know that a lot of you guys are younger and that a lot of you guys don't quite have a budget to get started with this stuff yet. So Please, when you're looking for plugins, try your absolute hardest to find the free shit because a lot of the free shit is actually developed really well. There's a lot of stuff that's not very good and it's people's first attempts at making plugins, but there's a lot of stuff that's really fantastic. Like one of the plugins that I quite like, if I open up the menu here, what's a free one that I really enjoy? Labs. Labs is fantastic. You do have to sign up for like the BBC Labs Orchestra, right? Um, it's, it's sampled from a real orchestra, which is fantastic. Um, however, you have to wait two weeks to get it if you don't want to pay for it because they have a back order queue. Um, and with this, you get like tons and tons of different sounds. You get brass, you get vocals, electric guitar, percussion, drums, keys, synth. There's tons of shit in here. And a lot of it sounds awesome because it is sampled from real instruments. I would highly recommend grabbing labs as fast as you can, uh, just because it's amazing. Uh. I have no idea why it is that they offer this for free. I just just go grab it. Um, it's worth way more than free, but they do it for free. And then you have Citrus for your synths, and then you have Labs uh, for you know your realistic instruments, and then you can go and look in uh, other places for other stuff. Another one that I really like using because it sounds really goofy and fun is this saxophone, um, which I will open up here. It doesn't sound great, but with a lot of those effects and modulation that we talked about, wow, there's some really cool stuff that you can do with it. Uh, let me see if I can find one of the songs that I wrote with the, the saxophone. No, I forget what the song is. Um, hmm. So I think that about covers like all the technical stuff. I'm not playing the Mario Kart lick. No, we'll talk about that another day. Um, I think that covers all of this stuff like conceptually that I wanted to talk about. So now I'm just going to go through songs and show you guys some like neat little things that I would do with them. Uh, what has an interesting implication here? Oh, you know what? Somebody asked earlier about BPM changes. Let's talk about that for a second. So I'm going to be real. I wrote this song uh, from 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. one day. So I was, uh, my head was way out of place. So forgive me if I have a hard time explaining any of these things. Also, automation will be discussed in this thing because it's uh, 
relevant here. So basically, um, the way that the tempo is changed is by adding these two little blocks here, right? So the, the line basically represents where the tempo is at, what the BPM is at. So if I'm here, right, we're sitting at 200 BPM, but we're talking about it at like half speed, right? That's how I wrote this song, so it doesn't feel as fast. And then when we get over here, this little tempo change here, that little block there, will automatically adjust it to 175. Right? And the way that I put that there, if I remember correctly, let me lab this a little bit because I was learning it as I was doing this. Um, you right click up there and you want to click create an automation clip, right? It's another drop down menu that you don't get to see, which is lame. But uh, when you're on the tempo, you can click create the automation clip and boom, it expands right here. And then what you can do is you can drag it around. You can, you can drag it around. Where are the drag points here? Here we go. You can drag it up or down or whatever, and it'll slowly change the tempo, right? So basically, you can adjust it by messing with it here. You can right click to add new points and, you know, change the curves and stuff. This is just a matter of like figuring it out over time because it feels weird and there's some weird adjustments that I don't fully understand. But like you can bend it like this and, you know, it kind of looks like when you take a GI Joe and you wobble it in the wrong way. Um, you can make an automation for anything. Yeah, um, which is really cool. So instead of doing the bend there, I decided to just make two automation clips, one of which sat at 175 and one of which sat at 200. So now it'll automatically do it. If you look up here while we're playing the song at tempo, boom, it just auto switches, right? You can do a smooth switch or you can do an immediate switch, which is really nice. The next chunk of automation that I wanna talk about is for the guitar, right? I did a little bit of pitch bending to make it sound more realistic so that uh, you know when the guitar players Put their uh, put their finger on the note and then they like wobble it a little bit and you get that like e -e 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 kind of sound, you know. Also, I can turn the camera back on, but I guess we'll do that during questions. I realize we only have twenty two people, so let's see. Here's the solo. I'm very proud of this solo, so I'm just gonna play it. Whammy! Thank you. That's the word. So. Uh, that was really fun. I love that one. And you notice here the three notes, D, D, and D. So there's a couple things that I did with these to make them sound like that. For one, I changed the velocity of the center one. You can see how this little node right here is pushed way, way up, right? If I bring that down, it does a totally different note, right? Well, it's, I mean, it's the same note, but it does a totally different sound, right? It's more of like a palm muted guitar. Every, again, every plugin is going to react to velocity changes differently. So with this one, if I crank it all the way up, I get that like, uh, here, how do I do this sound? You get that like kind of noise. It's not really what it sounds like, but I struggle to explain how it sounds. Fucking sit there. There we go. Right, so that was there. And then there's also, I'm not sure if I can actually show it. I don't know where it's listed. It should be somewhere in the pattern, but um, basically I used a pitch bending wheel. So I'll show you guys what that sounds like. It's on my physical MIDI controller. Whoops, I'm not, I haven't selected the right thing here. It, it kind of sounds funny. So I don't actually know how to do that without the physical hardware. Um, I'm sure there's a way you could totally find out. I just haven't bothered. So that sounds pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but that makes it sound a lot better to me. So basically what I did was when I got to these notes in the pattern, I clicked this red button up here and it opens up a window and it says notes and automation. So when you do that, the next time you play the pattern, it'll actually record everything that you do in terms of effects, right? So what you want to do is have your finger on the pitch wheel or, you know, go into the program and find the pitch wheel there and do it. Like, I think the pitch wheel for this thing, yeah, it's way up here, right? So you open up the main thing and you can put it like that. Although uh, that's a little bit more difficult. I like using the physical wheel. So you hit record, you click notes and automation, and then I'm not going to do it because it'll mess up the recording, but 
next time when you play it, it'll count you in. It'll go one, two, three, four, and then it'll play the pattern, and then you can record whatever it is that you want to do to it. So for me, oh, excuse me. For me, it was pitch bending these guys right here. So basically I let it play and then I pulled it down and then I let the next one play and then I pulled it down and then I did it again for the third one. And that's how you get the specific sound that, you know, I did. Um, and then after doing that, you turn off the recording and then boom, it's done. Now, every time you play the pattern, that thing will automatically apply because you've now applied automation to it. I don't need to touch it. It just does it, which is great. So adding automation to individual patterns is important if you want a pattern to do something while it's going on. And then adding automation to the song, like this tempo change, allows you to you know mess with the entire progress of the thing. So automation is a very handy tool. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm not super experienced in it. So that's why I'm hesitating to go over explaining all of it. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, and when I say record um, this button up here, you're not actually recording voice. Basically, what the, what the record button does here is you, you can select a certain chunk of things to do with it. So when you click notes and automation, it'll record all of the progress that you make using any of the effects. And then it'll attach that to the pattern so that it happens every time you play it. So you're not recording your microphone if you don't click on that button. If you click record anything, it'll record everything that you're doing. It'll record your voice out of your microphone. It'll record all the changes that you make to notes. You don't want to do that. You want to choose the thing at the time when you're recording it. So use that button. Don't be afraid of it. Just be sure that you click notes and automation. Very, very important. Um, what's another cool thing I did? Oh, yeah, SliceX. That thing that I taught you about for, um, for the chromatic scales also is applicable in other situations. Let's see, where is he? He's somewhere in here. Is it this one? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so let's find out. Okay, so we're gonna open up SliceX now. So this here is actually just a big loop of like, uh, you know, a distorted sound design bass that I had found. Right, that wouldn't work in the song that I'm writing at all. But you can take a resource like this, you can pitch it out, and then you can put it in SliceX, and you can basically turn it into your own personal synth. So now that I've pitched it down, I've chopped it up like this, now you can see what I did with these sounds. Right, that doesn't sound remotely similar. Um, you can do a lot of really, really cool things with SliceX. Um, like, I'm learning more and more about it every single day, and uh, highly recommend it now. You can use it to chop up drum loops so that you can make your own like chunks of drums if you don't want to use your own. You can use it to design your own synths. You can use it especially with the voices. It's very helpful. Please rely on SliceX a lot. And you get cool stuff like this. Or sorry, we gotta move to pattern five. Pat no, let's go to pattern nine. And then you get the drum break here. And up here you have some choir voices. And again, please be resourceful. Um, there's a lot of neat things that you can do just with your voice. Like I was talking about earlier, this sample here is actually just a reversed clip of me breathing into the microphone. Granted, it also has some effects on it, like you can figure out. Um, but again, that's just my voice, right? I didn't, I couldn't find the kind of thing that I wanted. So I decided, hmm, I think I'll do it myself today. And you know, it results in something like this. Right, it really accentu accentuates that drop and uh, you can do some really neat things. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that about covers all the interesting stuff that I did in this one. Yeah, 
yeah, it is a very much a fine, I'll do it myself kind of moment. Um, I haven't really tried it yet, but one thing I've really been wanting to do is um, like grab sounds from around my house. I wanted to go over to my washing machine and record that. I wanted to go and like grab a couple of my pots and pans and hit them and, you know, record those so that I can try slice X with them. I can try effects with them. I can do all sorts of wacky things and hopefully have some new sounds to work with. So I think that about covers just about everything I want to talk about here. Um, yeah, I think we can move on to the questions portion now uh, without any big issues. Um, so if you guys want, uh, let's pop into the questions chat and then you guys start raising your hands and then we'll start answering questions on a stage. So I'll see you guys in there. <laughs> 